Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today we've got lots to talk about, starting with the new KA series of CPUs, the first official Ampere benchmark, Intel's 11th gen gets big clocks, 12th gen release, and Intel is in serious trouble. But first, if you're looking at getting parts for your next PC, check out kit.co slash gamermelt, where I go over hardware suggestions based on component type. I also give a short description for why you may or may not want a certain part. Not only that, but when you follow the links, you're helping the channel out. And this is fairly early, so I'll be adding a ton more in the near future, as well as keeping it updated as new hardware comes out. So visit kit.co slash gamermeld today. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, a few European retailers have begun listing an entirely new series of 10th gen Intel CPUs. As you can see, the new processors use the KA designation, which is something we've never seen before. The odd thing is that they're all listed as i9s, but I'm really not sure. Maybe that's just a mistake, I don't know. As for pricing, it seems these are marked between the KF and regular K series. Most seem to think that they're the normal K processors that simply can't reach the rated clocks. If that is the case, as gamers, I'd suggest going with the KF models since most of us use a discrete GPU anyway. Next up for today, it looks like we have our first benchmark on NVIDIA's new Ampere architecture. In a tweet from the CEO of OTOY, you can see he tweeted a benchmark of the new Ampere A100. Now, the fact that everyone's making a big deal about it being a record breaker is odd given it's the newest GPU. I mean, it should beat last gen, but that aside, it does let us see just how much better it is. In this, you can see it was 43% faster than Turing and Octane Bench, even with RTX off, which definitely is impressive. The A100 doesn't have ray tracing cores, so it couldn't use them anyway, but regardless. And while this is a compute benchmark, it's still a pretty huge jump in performance, especially given it isn't using RTX. Now if we could just get the RTX 3000 series already. That or the XE GPUs. Luckily, we won't have to wait long for those as Intel recently tweeted that we'll get more information in just 20 days. Unfortunately, they then deleted the tweet, but it's probably still going to happen. They likely just didn't mean to mention it. That or it was postponed and Intel forgot to stop the automated tweet. Either way, I wouldn't expect it to be much further off. Let's just hope we learn about their gaming GPU. Even if it's just a low-end card, more competition is always good. Next up for today, it looks like Intel's 11th gen Rocket Lake processors are set to have some decent clocks. In a new Geekbench benchmark found and shared by Leakbench, you can see it shows an 8-core, 16-thread Rocket Lake part. But what's interesting is that it comes with a very impressive 5 GHz boost. Remember that Rocket Lake is rumored to still utilize the same 14 nanometer plus 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 however many pluses process as Comet Lake, but it utilizes an all new backported architecture. If it's able to maintain decent clocks as well as get a much needed IPC increase, Rocket Lake could be a fairly decent jump for Intel. With that said, at Intel's recent Q2 earnings call, the company did confirm that Alder Lake S is set for release in the second half of next year. And Alder Lake S is set to be their first mainstream desktop processors built on the 10 nanometer process. Basically, Rocket Lake looks like it could be a fairly short-lived release, but it's still nice to see some decent clocks. Then again, let's be honest, we're ready for 10 nanometers. Unfortunately, Intel's somewhat good news stops there, as the company is in some serious trouble with today's last story, and I mean very serious trouble. It all started during the company's Q2 earnings call, where they stated, quote, The company's 7 nanometer CPU product timing is shifting approximately 6 months relative to prior expectations. The primary driver is the yield of Intel's 7 nanometer process, which, based on recent data, is now trending approximately 12 months behind the company's internal target. So yeah, things are not looking good over at Intel. They're now projecting the 7 nanometer release to be between late 2022 and early 2023, and I doubt that's for desktop either. Plus, we know Intel has pushed dates back multiple times in the past, so who knows if it'll be later or what. According to this, it looks like yield rates are yet again the issue, similar to 10 nanometers, so 2023 could really be a best case scenario. Of course, let's pretend that is the actual case. By 2022, AMD will likely be on a revised 5 nanometer process from TSMC, or maybe even something smaller, making it almost seem like Intel's 7 nanometers could be dead on arrival. At the end of the day, Intel is a big company, but even shareholders are getting concerned. 
Intel stock dropped over 16% since the news broke, while AMD has gone up by roughly the same amount. As always, time will tell. So while that does it for today, is Intel in serious trouble or is this simply a small bump in the road to an ultimate comeback? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.